Ultra running is all about what's in your head. Yes, your body matters, but what's in here will make you push through your limit. But how can you prepare mentally if you don't know what to expect in terms of challenges and what your mind will go through? Today, I'm gonna give you some tips to fight what are the likely stages you'll go through during your ultra marathon so that you'll be prepared for it and you'll stay strong the whole day. And here are the tips and stages of ultra running. Hi, my name is Simon, I'm an ultra runner. I've done 2,900 miles so far, some of the pretty difficult one too, Badwater, Hooray 100, Leadville. Today I wanna to share with you what you will go through mentally during these races. The reason for that is that it will help you face these challenges and have a solution for it instead of feeling lost. <laughs> Just like the stages of grief and oh, Simon, wait, wait, is there a parallel between the stages of grief and your stages of ultra running? Maybe. You might go through all of them in that order, but not necessarily. You might skip some, you might go backwards sometimes, but the truth is that even for myself, every time I do a race, I go more or less through these stages, sometimes faster, sometimes longer. You will eventually reach that destination. And the grief stage is acceptance, and this one, it's enlightenment. And Wow, I would love to have the enlightenment at the start of a race. And you can't force it. You cannot go through a stage of grief and say like, oh, denial, anger, okay, I'm at acceptance. No, it will take time. And in the race, it will take mileage and suffering, but that's okay. What you need to know is that you will reach the destination. So first, you've been training a lot. Obviously, you've watched my previous video, so you had a very good training schedule and it is awesome. But you might have struggled to follow it for various reasons. You might have been injured. You might have been busy with work. You may even might have been not motivated at some point. And now you feel guilty about that. Now you wonder if you're really prepared for it. And now you have some doubt about it. Excited and ner nervous a little bit. L'Oreal presents Volume Filler Shampoo. With L'Oreal Volume Filler, hair is instantly thicker. Feels like two times more hair. More than beautiful. Extraordinary. And you're worth it. The hair are annoying, I'm cutting them when I'm back, once I'm back. Well, your training will never be perfect and you will never be 100% ready for a race. It doesn't mean that you won't be able. In fact, it means that you will be able and you have everything you need, you have every tool you need to be successful today. So you know that doubt? It's normal to feel it, but just reassure yourself, trust the process. You did a lot of work, not the perfect amount of work, but you did a lot of work and you deserve to be here and today is gonna to be your day. It is race day today, which means you wake up really early and you're really tired. Yes. I'm so tired this morning. I really don't know how it's gonna go. I'm a little bit nervous about it. Do I really want to go running right now? Like, do I really want to do this? Usually that's a 10 minute thing. I'm in these 10 minutes. So I am lazy sometimes. I'm drinking coffee. Coffee has side effects that could be helpful in the morning. Eventually you get your coffee, you go to the restroom, and now you're at the starting line. And what do you feel? depending if I'm a glass half full or glass half empty today, it'll be slightly different. So sometimes you arrive and you're just very nervous. You look around, whoa, everyone looks very fit, way more fit than me. Everyone seems to belong. It seems that they know what they're doing. And then you have me, oh, I'm in trouble now. And then you get really anxious about it. Or you might be the other way around. You look around and it's like, Hey, what's grandpa doing there? Oh, that person has a bit of a tummy and you feel superior. Like, yeah, I got this. Well, both are wrong. <laughs> it's normal to feel different ways, but here's the thing. You know that person that is really old? He has a lot of experience and he knows what he's doing. His mind game is there. He knows how to problem solve. He's probably done the race before. And you know what? He's most definitely finishing that. What's just incredible. And, uh, and so in honor, not just, that's just a bookend really. Bob first came out here 17 years ago on a crew. 
He has been here every year, either racing or crewing. But I want to honor Bob. Something we do just every few years with this race is we induct somebody who is super exceptionally extraordinary into the Badwater Hall of Fame. Very, very lucky to be here. And this is a great honor. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for having me. There's no one body type also for ultra running. Everyone is welcome. That's one of the things that is fantastic about this sport. And don't judge people for how they look. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that, but it's gonna rain real soon. Um, but don't judge people for how they look. They deserve to be there just as much as you deserve to be here. If you're really anxious about it, again, look at these people. Nobody is perfect. Nobody has a perfect body. And hey, if it's a difficult race, 50% of the people around you will not finish. Can you guess? The reality is that you can't because there's no guarantee. So you belong here, you did the work. Don't be too anxious, but don't judge other and just enjoy the moment. Run your race. Don't care about anyone else. Go at your pace, not faster. If you feel tired, slow down. It's super important. Otherwise, you're gonna poop yourself. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm not like that at all ever, but some people feel like that and then they're jumping and they're excited. And now it's three, two, one, go. And you start running. I was like, oh, Simon told me to go slowly. Okay, I'll go slowly. But this is so fun. Oh, oh, and that is excitement. Excitement will always happen. And sometimes you're better at controlling it and just being like, let's chillax, don't go too fast, but by not going fast, what you will feel is that you're very strong. You've never run so slow before. You have all the adrenaline of the race, everyone's running next to you. So first of all, it's easy to go too fast. But even if you don't, you will feel that excitement. Wow, today's the day. Wow, I'm racing Leadville. Wow, this is so great. And it's easy to get carried away. It's easy to go too fast. And that's okay it's easy to forget to eat. And that is not okay, that is never okay. Your race is 100 mile and you'll be so excited that you will forget the basic. Don't forget the basic, just stay grounded. We have a long day ahead of us. And I sound like a super bummer saying that, but stay grounded. Talk with people, take your time, walk the hills, eat a lot, drink a lot, take it slow because there is plenty of time to suffer later on. And I just don't want you to reach that point too early. Uh, but yes, so try to contain your excitement. It's a long race. You won't be that excited all the time. Just enjoy while you're feeling good, but don't forget the basic. All right, but you listen to me and like you're feeling good and you're enjoying when you're feeling good, but you're not too excited, that's great. No matter how well you listen to my advice, the next stage will happen and it's called first blood and first blood is when the first problem happened and you would think like that's gonna be at mile 60 or 80 now it's gonna happen way before that first blood is the first problem the first challenge the first time you struggle and it happens before you were thinking it would happen maybe you're starting to have blisters well take care of that right now maybe you're having some nausea e be careful but keep eating maybe you're getting tired wow i'm getting tired it's been 10 miles i have 100 miles to go my training is not working and then you will spiral out of control the first blood is the hardest challenge because it comes so early and you're suffering for problems to come later you're only at mile 10 mile 20. i have so much to go there's no way and that's really gonna hurt your confidence a lot it always does. There's always something going wrong. Mile five, cruising. I'm 
mile 10 surprisingly hot the heat is really getting to me already it's it's hot mile 15 already struggling amazingly i'm already struggling i think part of it is definitely mental thinking wow like i barely started but also physically i'm very tired and it's very hot and i'm sleepy i wish i could just lay down in bed i was like wow there's no way i can finish but guess what spoiler alert i finished and that's that's what you need to remember when you have the first blood just remember hey that's the first problem that i will solve you're a problem solver not a problem avoider so first blood is your first opportunity to actually prove that you can do it prove that you can solve problem and go past that and yes there will be problem later on but don't think about that don't think oh my god i have 80 miles to go that's that's totally irrelevant think about right now how can i solve that to stay strong nothing else matters hey who knows maybe the rest of the race will be easy maybe <laughs> let's be optimistic about it first blood is over Woo. now you're gonna do the first roller coaster you're gonna feel good about it you solve the problem you're not as tired, you take it slow, you were eating. Mile 24, feeling good. <laughs> Mile 27, it's hot. We are now just out of the Virgin Desert aid station. I'm feeling pretty good, taking my time to save energy. I don't think this is my best day ever, but I'm still feeling pretty strong. We're gonna try and maintain that, eating a lot, drinking a lot. I'm taking salt pills. Just trying to be slow and steady all day instead of fast and crash. That's great, now you're in the groove. And you're gonna do a love mile in that groove until well until something else will come up but that's okay you already had first blood you can't solve that uh, you're gonna struggle a little bit but solve then you're gonna feel good again and then there's another problem and then another problem and then another problem and now you're not just feeling a little bit tired you're drained you're really totally exhausted and that's the stage of depression it's the valley of the shadow of death if you will for me i know i said all of the stage take various amount of time this one is mile 60 that's mile 60 that's always mile 60 there's no exception that's usually when you will hear me say man 100k is such a great distance because you've done so much already but there's a lot left and there's nothing left in the tank at least that's how you think right now mile 57 losing hope i kind of crashed around when did i start crashing guys 60. Now okay, 60 times. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was pretty good until mile 50. Time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, I was going, uh, I was going five mile an hour for pretty much what 10 hour, and then it just went downhill. Is you can definitely push further than you think, and you just need to go back to basic and maybe potentially readjust your expectation. Maybe you were shooting for a 24 hour, 100 miler, and now maybe just finishing in 30 hours is the goal that you should get who knows maybe things have gone out of control maybe you did have a bad day this is not my day but now i know what the goal is for today the goal is not sub 25 the goal is to finish can't wait to get after mile 10. because the one you push through that you're the most proud of so let's just make this one happen. This is a critical time to avoid a DNF. This is the time to think about DNF is not an option. And don't get me wrong, DNF, and I'll probably make a full video about that sometimes, how to deal with DNF, but DNF are part of ultra running. When you push your limit to the point where people call you crazy for doing something like that, the truth is sometimes you will fail. And that is totally okay. Part of doing something ambitious is failing. Most of the race I've been doing, 100 miler, 
It's 50% DNF rate. It's not people that didn't work out. It's not people that don't belong. It's just people that had bad things happen to them and potentially they let it get to their head. And I don't want that to happen to you. So you need to remember, this is a critical stage to avoid the DNF. This is a critical stage where you need to be mentally very strong because physically, you're at that 40% rule. Physically, you feel totally destroyed and you should be, but don't let that get better. Don't let that, don't let, don't let get. Don't let that get you. Yeah. How do you do that? Well, that's difficult. That's really difficult. And I will also make a video about all the day, day race tips in terms of mind trick that you can use to push further. But there's a lot of them. You could go more with the don't be a little bit just be harder but you can also think about being grateful if there are people supporting you think about them that's what matters is you, you push you push your limit to what you think you could do and there's definitely times where i felt like i don't want to do that this last time i felt like you know and it's a race against yourself your own thought thinking like i, I could just quit i don't have to finish this kind of thing. well the good thing is when you have a crew like that i would feel really stupid quitting uh they came from pretty far to support me and they give they are all so, I mean, I had to finish uh, yes. no matter what. And, uh... Honestly, nobody will be disappointed if you drop or think any less of you. Um, be grateful for the opportunity to be there. Think about all the training. There's for sure some setbacks you faced during training. Was it harder than what you're facing right now? You train all that time. Like, let's push a little bit more and let's never be let's never be a slave of the future the problem with the 60 mile mark for me is that 40 mile is a long way to go i'm not close to being done usually i have at least the whole night ahead of me don't be a slave of that future right here right now yes i'm feeling bad let's read the other eight station let's break it down can i make one more step yeah i can make one more step well now can you make one more yeah i can make one more can you reach the next aid station yeah by breaking down by something that is realistic you will have shorter goals that you can achieve until next thing you know, you're at that last aid station. So just remember in the valley of the shadow of death, you can do it. But I understand that it's hard. And remember, it's mostly in your head. Yes, your body is destroyed, but it's mostly in your head. In the valley of death, DNF is the big risk. That's where it's very risky that you might DNF. And there's a huge bee that's about to bite my wife and I'm so scared. She's okay. Fuck, fuck really? She's okay. Um, do you want to stop filming? No. Where okay, is it? Okay, she's, she's wrong. <laughs> I'm still filming. All right. <laughs> DNF at this point should be the second worst thing in the universe. The worst thing in the universe should be injuries. Yes, a DNF to prevent injuries or any safety concern. Yes, yes, please do that. Don't, don't mess yourself up. Like how important is a finish? How important is a belt buckle? compared to being able to to keep enjoying running if you get a serious injury that's very problematic don't do that but the second thing the second worst thing should be a dnf one to six four we're right back where we started okay danny i need a no bs assessment here can you get to the crash site there's a f pocket in him sir that's crazy doesn't matter size more where the hell do you think you're going for you guys not that cast on your nuts can't go back up there. Thomas, everyone feels the same way you do. It's what you do right now that makes a difference. That's how you should feel at this point. The pain, the struggle, the blister, throwing up, that's not important. What's important is to keep going. Okay, it started raining really bad in the middle of filming, so I'm sorry about how weird that will look, but I do have a few things to say. So DNF, it doesn't mean it's not the solution. And what I would want to add to that is that once you're later, a DNF is far from the worst thing. Just remember, half of the people DNF a race, and even people like Courtney, they have DNF. That happens. And you shouldn't think any less of you or your ability to finish a race because you had a DNF. And that valley of the shadow of death can last very long. <laughs> it can last to the finish line, but hopefully you will reach a stage before that. There's no possible way that all of you can make it. For the one day, say yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil because I am the baddest mother in the valley. Yes, yes, Sergeant! We shall see. You still here? Yes, yes, Sergeant! Yes, what? Yes, I am still here, Staff Sergeant. So be it. Fall in! 
that's something that for me has happened very early in races before and it's the stage of enlightenment it's the clear vision of the future that deep down you know you know you're gonna finish it's not that you know you can finish is you know you will finish that's something you need to hold on very dearly that's the most precious thing grab that thing put it in your pocket oh no there's no room in your vest why because there's the cars to your keys whoa you don't need a car but you need to know that you can finish once you reach that enlightenment stage never lose that yeah <laughs> Yeah, we're finishing this! It doesn't mean it will be easy, but you have a 2020 vision on the future, which is from now to the finish, I will face pretty bad struggle. It will be difficult. I will suffer. But, whoa, I'm gonna finish Leadville. And any challenge after that, once you know you will finish, is just a challenge. It's just an annoyance. It's not something that will prevent you from finishing. It's just something that will make it more worthwhile for you to push through that and reach that finish line. So you hold on to that very dearly. You will cross that finish line and you will feel relief. You will feel excited. You will feel proud. One caveat is that you will not necessarily finish the race and you shouldn't think any less of you if you don't finish the race. What matters is think about where you were maybe a year ago and where you are today. Things might not have gone according to plan, but you've built something, a foundation for your next attempt. Being strong is not about never dropping. It's not about never bending. Being strong is about learning and improving. That's how you're strong. And your enlightenment, if you have to DNF, might be that your enlightenment might be i will be back and i will finish this i hope it was helpful obviously this is a little bit comedic but at the same time it's to help you prepare mentally and i will definitely do other videos about how to think like an ultra runner how to face challenges but knowing what you will go through hopefully will make you realize that it's normal at mile 20 to feel oh my god there's no way i can do that it's normal to doubt yourself at 60 and again feel that there's no way just know that it's such a common thing we all go through that and somehow all you need to do is convince yourself in that moment that things will get better because things will get better they will and eventually you will come to the clear realization that things will be hard running a hundred mile is not easy but you can do it and you will do it and hopefully my tips are helpful if it's helpful please leave a thumbs up if you have other question about subjects you would like me to cover ask in the comment below and until then, have a good one.